Hello, everybody. Okay. I am happy to see some of your faces. I know it is the last week or so of the month, and it looks like it might already be a long week for everyone, but I appreciate you guys calling in and taking some time to just pour into this and connect with us on um, this evening. So <clears throat> Tiffany's going to share a little bit about um, what she learned at her event this weekend with Brad, who is her mindset coach. And um, there's no real updates before we jump into that. Um, I tried to post in Team Phoenix. Um, some clarity around the different deals going on. So there, I'm pulling it up right now to make sure I say it correctly. So um, the monthly membership, it says it's offered until December 31st. So I'm guessing they're doing a trial to see how well it does. And it's for new body customers and partners can sign up with the monthly membership. It's 30 days of the body membership and 20 servings of shapes. And um, you get one success club point for it. So if someone's interested, that's how it all works. And um, it also says it's super smart to sign them as partners because it makes their that monthly charge only $75 with their $16 plus their $16 fee. So um, it sounds like from that, that they get a discount. You get your coach partner discount, your 25% off on that. And normally you don't get a discount on like your body renal if you're doing it for the year. So that's how I'm taking that. The flavors are limited, sort of like the um, shake and hustle, but it's a really good option. So if you guys have any other questions about that, let me know. And then um, I think that was the biggest thing we wanted to clear up from last week. So does anyone have any other questions? With this fitness bundle that you can get for free, they have to use that promo code. I was talking to Becky. I didn't realize like it's like a free thing, but I made a cart for someone today, which it kept coming up as a blank screen for her. And she's like, I don't know. And I've sent it like three times and literally just comes up black. But when I click on the link, it comes right up. So I don't know. But with that, you just, for the total solution pack, you put that in and then you add on the bundle because it says it's $80. But if they use the promo code, like the price just goes away and makes it free. Like, I just feel like that's, <laughs> sale I don't know I haven't had any so my understanding is if they're not yet a customer like they can't do it with their initial purchase and then add it in oh so that could have been throwing them off but if they're a new customer they sign up for their bundle and then go back in with a new cart and do that it does yeah it's like 89.95 Okay, so they, you can't add it on to the sign up. No. And I think that would be nice because it'd be one step, but yeah, uh, I think it messes with their shipping. So I think you have to do it separate, especially if they don't have an account yet. They don't qualify for it. Okay, I'll have to tell her that. How does that work then? Because I feel like then everyone can just get it. Everyone can get it. Oh, so I could just log in right now and get it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Literally anyone can get it. It's not just for new people. So, um, like I could get it. A bunch of the people in our Elevate gym said they got it. So yeah, if you want equipment, you get, I mean, I don't need equipment, but it is, but it is good to know. Yeah, I know. I'm like, I kind of want it, but I kind of don't because I have all those things, but that's a sweet deal for people that don't have those things. Um, okay. Good question. Anything else? All right. So Tiffany, do you want to jump in and then I can just 
take whatever time you need and then we can kind of go into the call after. Yes. Okay, um, so it was great at this conference, but so it was very focused on health. So okay. there's three core life arenas, health, wealth, and relationships. And um, health was this focus. So it's been funny because like Brad's been trying the last couple months to kind of prep us to be like, okay, what are, go train for something basically. He's like, set a good health goal and go train. And so I kind of was like, why do I need to train for something? I work out every day. Like I feel fine, like fit, healthy wise, whatever. So I just kind of brushed it off and I didn't pay any attention to it much um, until I got to the event and he talked more in depth, I guess. And the way he explained it just like clicked for me. And so he was saying like, when you train for something, it is not convenient. So he's like, yes, you can work out for 25 minutes every day. That's fine. But when you're training for something, you are literally making it inconvenient. You're carving this time out of your life to do this thing that's like crazy hard and difficult or whatever. So for him, he's doing like a Spartan Ultra and um, he's like running 18 miles in a day and doing hundreds of burpees and all this stuff and hundreds of pull-ups. And it's like insane. And so when he put it that way, it clicked not just in the health realm, but because I was like, oh, it makes sense. Um, but also like in literally every aspect of your life, because if you're training, I feel like health is kind of the easiest way that you can train for something and get the result, you know? Um, so like if you're running a Spartan, then yeah, you're going to be training and making all this effort and inconveniencing yourself. But after the fact, then you're able to like look back and be like, oh yeah, I freaking did that. And you have that capacity and recognize it, not just in the health realm, but in all other realms. So once you like are disciplining your actual body to do something, then it can transition to your mind and you can train your mind to do something or your business and all of these different things that can come into your life through the process of training inconveniently. Um, he said that or was it? He's like, it's never going to be convenient, whether it's relationships, whether it's business, whether it's a health journey, whatever it is. Um, and he said, possibility comes through inconvenience and convenience, convenience and greatness do not coexist. And I love that. And then he talked a little bit about failure as well. And like setbacks that come um, while you're on your journey. Um, so saying like, if people are saying, I'm too scared to take this, take this goal on or whatever, I'm scared of what's going to happen as a result of me working towards this goal. And he's like, uh, no, the goal is not the scary thing. You're just afraid of recreating the past. And he's like, when failures happen, when setbacks come, just allow it to happen. Like, don't make it wrong. Just allow it to happen. And when he said that, I'm like, oh, that's a breath of fresh air because it's just like, this is okay, you know, giving yourself that room to just like be and let things happen the way that they're supposed to. Um, so really just breaking down, like, are you willing to live an inconvenient life? And what does that inconvenient life look like? Is it figuring out an email marketing series? Is it being vulnerable on social media? Is it getting up early so you can get things done? Um, anyway, is it there's lots of things but yeah I would encourage you to think about like okay how can I inconvenience myself to train for like the end result that I'm going for um he also talked about let me skip forward here um he talked about when like how change happens so like at the very bottom it's like a triangle so the very bottom is you have your 3D environment. So it's basically just what you desire and what your goals are. Now, usually when people have that, that dream of theirs, they start to change their behaviors because they're like, okay, I can change my behaviors, try to make this happen. That usually doesn't last very long. So the next step above changing your behaviors is changing your skills and your thoughts. And that's gonna be like more effective in helping you reach your goals but um, the step above that is changing your beliefs and your values. And then above all of it 
is your identity. So changing your identity first is going to make you change your beliefs and values. That's going to make you change your skills and thoughts. It's going to make you change your behavior, which makes you change your environment. Um, and so we focused a lot on like values. What are our values? Changing those values, making it so easy to feel the good values. So like maybe, so like for me, it was like, I valued certainty above love and security and all of this, which sets me up for failure basically. And so switching that to be like, okay, I want to value love and abundance and these things. And then making it, so breaking it down. So it's so simple to feel um, like there's a difference in calling yourself a coach versus an entrepreneur versus a CEO. Like they're, the identity truly is like, if you identify as a coach, you're going to approach your business so much differently than if you identify as an entrepreneur or a CEO. And same thing with like, if you identify as a victim versus a survivor versus a thriver. So um, I, let's see here. Sorry, this isn't, I didn't put this together super well, but um I, what I, so I don't know. I don't know if you guys want to sit and think about it for a little bit, or if you just kind of want to have it in the back of your head, but like for an example, what I, my identity, my new identity that I created for myself so that I can move forward towards reaching my dream um, was like, I am an unstoppable and innovative entrepreneur and businesswoman. I am a kind, happy, and loving wife and mother. So it really is that much, just like, it seems like a small shift, but rather than saying like, I'm a coach, I'm a health coach or whatever, but it's like, no, I'm an unstoppable and innovative entrepreneur and businesswoman. Boom. Um, so then, sorry, I'm jumping everywhere, but look for little nuggets he also shared. Mm. Sorry. Um, I won't talk about that. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Looking for So something interesting that he shared was that when he does his master classes or like in person at his events and everything, he starts priming the people to say yes. So he's like getting asking them questions that they say yes to. So I don't know if anyone's watched his master class, but like during it, he's like, if you want more energy, then type yes in the chat or whatever. Just like that's a silly example. But he starts priming everyone like saying, yes, 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 yes. And then he's like, you need to be doing that in your sales because that's giving them the yes mentality so that they're going to be more likely and willing to say yes. That was just a little something that I thought was very interesting and I hadn't thought about really before. <clears throat> um, and then, you know, I marked something else. I mean. He was also talking about like how when you have an inner conflict with with whatever if you're like going towards a couple different goals or if you're like trying to figure out what you're trying to your new marketing plan or whatever it is if you have this inner conflict it's really a values conflict um and he calls that internal marketing because you're like trying to convince yourself <laughs> what you're trying to do um so that's why just once again it's so important to like recognize what your values are what those triggers are and then rewriting what those values what you want your values to be in order to be successful um that's not what i wanted to share though this is it i think nope that wasn't it either sorry guys oh and he said what the strongest force that along with values and identity he said the strongest force in the human personality is the need to stay consistent with the need to stay consistent with who you already think you are. So I don't know. I honestly, like maybe some of you guys only think you identify as like a mom and maybe a coach or something or an accountability partner, whatever. But um, or maybe you think like I'm negative or I am super inconsistent or whatever it is. And so if you're telling yourself that and that's your like go-to state, then that's where you're gonna like, 
that's going to be where you resort to when even after being elevated that's like your temperature we've talked about that before right abby probably <laughs> it's your temperature like if you rise up it's gonna you're gonna go right back down because it's like you're neutral and um so like really that's just why you should set that intention of i'm an unstoppable and whatever businesswoman or whatever you want to be um what we do is rarely a function of what we can do it's a function of who you identify as so sorry, I don't have like hours and hours to actually take you through this values exercise and identity thing like he did, but just, it was very focused on like values, identity, and then comes like the action and the sh clarity and whatever. And even if like you are afraid to take action, like just because you take action doesn't guarantee results but taking no action guarantees no results. So which do you wanna be in, you know? Anyway, that was the majority of everything. Um, at least that I briefly looked through and saw, but hopefully someone found some value in that. No, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing. So do you think like when we were talking after you went, it's almost like if you, it's almost like if you feel misaligned with your values, like something feels off in your like pyramid that you explained. And then it's like, it's not working because you're stuck in that marketing, internal marketing head. I'm trying to use your lingo you use, but it's kind of like, we all need to evaluate like, are our values and priorities where they want to be currently in life? Like, if not, we can shift them. And I know like you and me both, Tiffany, it's like, we want to be present and show up for our kids and be like loving and caring and like, not like, oh, I need to be doing my work and blah, 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 I'm behind. And I'm sure some of you can relate to that, but it's like, I think valuing, just like a reminder to value that then we don't get as frustrated when our babies are up and then we're able to pour into our work more. Like, I feel like it all aligns. So if certain things feel off, maybe we see like, what would you rather it look like? And that kind of helps you realign your values. And then you kind of like push it back through of like, okay, how can I change something to make it look like this? Is that right? Did that make any sense? <laughs> yeah, no, it did. I think like for me, so when I valued certainty, realized that I valued certainty over love and everything, it meant that I was trying to meet that need for certainty above everything else. So like my family was getting pushed to the side and not treated whatever respectfully or whatever. So then it caused these issues. And so I was out of alignment. Exactly. And so I wasn't happy. And I was trying to find certainty, like in my goals and what directions do I do and how should I do this and how should I do that and trying to find that certainty, but I wasn't finding it. And so once I realized like, whoa, you got to realign the values, reevaluate where you want to be. So like love, abundance, all of that comes. Then it was like, oh, it just made it so much easier to feel in alignment and feel that it's wherever I'm going, like it's going to be all right because I have my priorities in line my values and that was something that brad said also that really stood out to me um it was like the answer to everything that i wanted when i went there but he was like if you keep jumping from goal to goal to goal to goal it's because you're trying to find happiness in the goal and you have to have happiness first and that was like the biggest aha moment for me because i was like creating that certainty and like do I do this? Do I do this? Do I do this? Do I do this? I have no freaking clue. And it was so frustrating. And because I wasn't having that certainty, everything was just so wrong, so out of alignment. And as soon as he said that, it was like happiness. Like that's, that's what my focus needs to be on if I want to grow and succeed in any area of my life. That's awesome. And people are going to feel your happiness in this business. So like everyone's happiness can look different. It's just, if that energy comes out, they're going to feel it and they're going to trust you more. They're going to want to build that relationship. But like if 
happiness is like how we talk about having energy or like they want what you have that whatever like you have something that is like intriguing to them and I think that all does come from feeling aligned and energized and happy and just like when things are just um yes people can smell BS from a mile away and I think if something feels off in your business just like if it feels off in your workouts you switch your workout program and I'm not saying to keep jumping like Tiffany just explained but like if something feels a little off, try to change one thing, one focus thing. Like we talked about one focus thing last week and it's like, change one thing and see if it feels a little bit better. Change one more thing and like give it a week or two or three or whatever and just see if it brings you more joy. Cause I know I've mentioned it, but I was struggling with like what to post and like overanalyzing it and being like, well, I have to post this way because that's how it's going to work. But then like my heart wasn't in and I'm like, I don't even want to post anymore. Like this is stupid. And then I was like, okay, I'm going back to like, whatever. Honestly, I used to plan out my posts and now I don't at all. I just grab a video from the day and speak from my heart of whatever happened. And that is like crazy new to me, but I like it because it speaks to like whatever I'm feeling that day. And I'm not saying no one, y'all don't have to make a plan. I'm just saying like, I needed to make that shift because I felt like I was too like overthinking everything and people couldn't feel my energy. So I think just making that shift and not everyone's going to be your person. So I don't care if people don't like what I post, but if that's exactly how I'm feeling in this season and it feels right to me, I'm going to share it. So I really do encourage you guys to find shift slash find your values. If something constantly drives you nuts or like doesn't feel right or feels icky because it shouldn't feel like that in this business you are your own business owner like you choose so you don't have to do anything icky and I think it's funny because we have our tracker or our yeah our business activity tracker and um our new coach Becca she started and she is jumping in and she has like a prior commitment on Tuesday evenings, but, um, it's just crazy because she, it's like guiding them. Like, here's the details, but like, go in with your heart, go in, like, think of when you first started, you just were like, so excited and passionate. You just shared with your heart. Like, we need that back. Cause now we're like, oh, but this tells me I should do this. And this tells me I should do this, then this and this and this and this, and then we lose it all. So I don't know. I started to kind of go with my heart and wing it a little bit more, as long as I'm still taking the action. And yeah. Does anyone else have any other thoughts before I just keep talking? I think this was awesome. And did he make you guys do like or he just used like the challenge as a reference or like he made you guys do something physical. (laughs) No, he's been like in our Voxer, he's like, everyone share what you're doing. And I I haven't done anything, but people have like freaking done triathlons and Spartans and Ironman, like doing all these cool things. So I hopped on the phone with Ben after and I was like, we have to train for something. (laughs) You could do a 5K and do the... um what is it breakaway I forgot what it's called there's a 30 day breakaway yeah you could try well well, that's kind of where I'm thinking I'm like I should probably start with a 5k but I hate running like hate it so I'm like I want to do something else and then he's drawn to the Spartans so we'll see (laughs) we'll see what happens (laughs) that's fun for a couple like adventure I like it I look forward to it and I saw his little like shoulder grab I was like oh that was so cute (laughs) we're thriving (laughs) oh sorry anyone else have any like anything that really sparked them or like anything they want to share dude I don't know how you (laughs) sorry yeah Carla just ran like what how many miles did you run like a week or two ago seven 
nine. I used to be, I loved it. Like I trained myself how to run and I'd run half marathons. And now I like, can't think of running. So I don't know. Like, I think I, my mindset changed or I had a child and now I can't even imagine, like, I don't know, <laughs> but I'm always like, that would, I have a limiting belief. I'm like, I think I would really die if I ran a marathon. My body's not made for that. But, um, cause I'm like a half marathon. I almost died, but I made it. So like double would be like death, <laughs> but people do it all the time. And so that would be, that'd be a good goal. What are you training for a race right now? A full marathon? No, um, I'm doing a half, but it's the first like long distance thing I've done since being pregnant. So it's in the third week in October. So it's getting close, but I'm like, I feel pretty confident about it. And I, I'm not as fast as I was before Aurora. And I'm just like, most of the time I'm okay with that. But then sometimes that like little voice gets in my head and I'm like, come on, Carla, you should be faster. But I'm like, my body's just different. And I never ran to like be the fastest. So I'm like, just get out of your head and just, you're doing it. Like, that's the important thing. So it's just the internal struggle. <laughs> that's what Tiffany was talking about. You like signed up for the inconvenient, I think is what she said. That's awesome. How perfect. All right, go ahead, Corrine. Sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. I was just going to say, I mean, you basically ran your, when you and you ran nine miles and you were training for your half. I was like, you basically ran a half. I don't know how you did that, but good for you. Um, this kind of piggybacks off the broad stuff, just talking about like your mess is like your message. And that was from um, the Slay Squad call. And just, this is where we connect with people is with our message, right? Is like sharing the messy, sharing the hard, sharing the raw, the real. Um and when we don't share, it's, and he said, like, why, why don't we share what's in our heart, right? Like, why aren't we trying to make those connections? Like, instead of trying to like make the sale, like, I know I talked to Abby about this the other day, like she's signing up coaches left and right. And I'm just like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm just like connecting. And I'm like, I try to connect, but man, you just have girls that just want to join. And that's awesome. But, um, how we can make more people feel seen and heard is like us sharing our message. I know I shared um something that I thought was, I talked, I don't know, I talk a lot about postpartum depression and like going to therapy and a lot of people don't talk about that. And people say, you know, they like to follow me and listen to what I have to say because I'm real and I'm raw and I share like the mess, like not everything's rainbows and butterflies. Um, and I feel like that's how you connect with other people. So I feel like we need to be doing that more. And if you aren't doing that, it's, it is hard and it is scary. And you have to kind of step out of your comfort zone in itself to do those types of activities. But that's how you find other people and have like a connection. And that can make a friendship or a support system for you. Even if they don't join body, you can make a new friend. Um, and I've like made a ton of new friends on Instagram. They don't do body, but I'm like, well, I have a new, another mom friend I can bounce ideas off of. So I had a girl the other day, I've been talking to her for like, and Karen and her daughter were babies. And she's like, I feel bad. You spend a lot of time on me. You give me so much free resources and I'm not helping your business. And I was like, it's not about that. It's like, we're helping each other out. Like I ask you about things and I, like you're moving your body and you haven't been doing that in the past. And she's like, she sent me a message this morning. And she's like, look, I worked out today. I'm really proud of myself. Like, I was like, I'm helping people without you know, like having them join me, but just like you're making connections. So I thought, obviously, like we talk about this all the time, but um, I like that talking about like your mess and your message. Carla and I talked about his call real quick before this call and we talked about like his book and I feel like I, I just downloaded like him onto my podcast. Cause I want to start listening to him. Cause he's, I like his voice. He's not annoying. And I definitely think he has good content to share. So if you guys haven't listened to that, make sure you do. 
That's good. I, sorry, just when you were talking about vulnerability, that reminded me of a message that Brad sent to us, like right before it all started on Saturday, but he just said, vulnerability just means real. I think a lot of times it's easy to put this label on vulnerability. Like it means we need to share our dirty laundry with the world intentionally. Vulnerability just means be who you really are. My opinion is that the reason people aren't vulnerable is because of a fear of judgment and losing love. But if you're not real, then people never experience the true you. And if they don't experience the true true you, then you accidentally put yourself in a position of self-judgment and people can tell and then then they won't connect with you. So basically just be you. It's so simple. But I thought it I thought that was very powerful, just the whole part of like if you're not being real you, then you're turning it into self judgment and how that's connected. So yeah, vulnerable. Be vulnerable. Um I heard is a guy's name Rob. Is it Rob? Who's the guy that we listen to? Yeah, Rob. Okay. Well, he said also like vulnerability is not weakness. And I feel like a lot of people don't share being vulnerable because they consider it a weakness. And I'm like, I feel like you're strong by being vulnerable and you're stepping outside your comfort zone. So he said, vulnerability is not a weakness. It's a courageous step to share your message. So I thought that worked out really well that you just had that to me. Cause that was like the next thing I wrote down. I didn't take a ton of notes. I just was writing down like key things I took away from it, but it's true. Like we don't want to be vulnerable and share people like our, I don't know, hard times or just it's a scary thing, but it's also like, you don't know who else is out there that you could be helping or connecting with. So it is also good to be vulnerable. Carla, did you have any takeaways? I know you just listened to it before the call. Um, I didn't take any notes because I was like preparing dinner and then doing the dishes. But um, I I know that I really enjoyed. Um, what was he talking about? Um, I had a couple of aha moments with him, and now I don't remember um but I definitely wanted to look into his book because he was talking about I think he said like maybe there's 12 chapters in the book and like if he were to say one was like his favorite it would be on um like oh, what did he say Kareem about huh on habits well, was it Abby Habits. Yes, habits. Thank yes, you. Is- and like, oh, I like how he said about how um, most of the things we're scared of, it's just in our mind. And it's like not something that you can really fight against because it's not real. It's just something that we learn. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so there's no like actual way to fight like the fear of being like inadequate or the fear of failure because it's all just in your brain. I liked that. I wrote down the habits part too. I was like, yes, it makes so much sense because I didn't, I don't know if you watch my stuff, but I've been trying to like align it all back to habits. And it like kind of clicked for me because he kept talking about like the dopamine award reward system. And like when Becky did her call, hi. And um, one of the limiting beliefs we had was like, we don't celebrate every win. And he was explaining how you don't wanna wait to celebrate the win till the end because you lose your motivation, you lose your energy, you lose your push and you don't get those like dopamine hits. And then it's like, take action-based goals and results-based goals. So your long-term goal is gonna be that results-based goal which it could be like that losing your 30 pounds. It could be um, hitting that rank, but you have to also celebrate those action-based goals every single day in between reaching that other big goal. And maybe it's when you get your invites out, maybe it's when you post, like it could be the most simple thing, but celebrate it. 
be proud of yourself and like play some music, dance it out, do something where you're like, yes, I did that. Show up for your workout. And for the first five minutes, you don't want to do it, but you did it and be proud. And I just think it's like science that that is like the dopamine in your body. It like causes a reaction. So then you actually want to fall, like you start falling in love with taking the action because of that feeling. So one of the things I wrote down was cut down goals into smaller goals. So then you're celebrating more. And then um, it'll change your brain to want to take action versus not want to take action because it feels good. And then you fall in love with actually wanting to show up and take action. Like I kind of relate that to me getting up in the morning. I never, I'm like, why do I do this? But then every time I do it, I know exactly why I do it. So then I just keep showing up because I know it's worth it. And that was my favorite part of his call or like what I connected to most. But I like that he connects it to like scientific things too. So it's not like, what does he call it? Woo woo or whatever. Um, but it sounds like he's going to have a good book. And I actually just followed his podcast because Kareen said that. Um, the podcast is called The Mindset Mentor with Rob Dial. So I did like his perspective. Um, yeah. I don't know if I have anything else to say that's not going to just be repetitive. So I think this was really helpful. And I think an action kind of going out of this week could be related to everything we talked about. It's like, okay, maybe just like a reevaluation of our business and our own health and fitness journey in our life and say, what are my values? Am I aligned with it? And then make sure as you make little shifts to try to realign yourself, you're celebrating those wins along the way instead of beating yourself up. So obviously some days are gonna be harder than others and crazy and whatever, but there's always gonna be something to celebrate each day, even if it looks different than the day before. Like today I could be like, well, I didn't do three of the things I wanted to do and we, decided we're traveling to Texas on Thursday and talk to 80 million people to align plans to figure out a house and a car and a deed and a da 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 and where to stay with the baby. And I didn't get my work done. So I sucked. <laughs> but instead I'm trying to say, okay, well I posted and I showed up on my story and I did show up this morning, but like our minds trick us into all these like self-doubting, like you weren't meant to do this, see? And it like jabs you, but it's that whole mindset shift of like, no, that's okay. Like life's gonna happen. I value my family first. So it's okay to have family time that distracts you as long as you don't give up and you keep taking action the best way you can that day. But yeah, I am going to Texas on Thursday <laughs> as of today and it's Tuesday. So we're not driving though, so that's a win we almost were going to drive and that just made me want to die. <laughs> it's a 18 hour drive with a child that hates the car and wants snacks the whole time. <laughs> She'd throw up if we gave, <laughs> can you imagine? Okay. Shh, shh. She'd just vomit everywhere. Anyway. So yes. Um, I'm in North Carolina. So Yeah it's I've done it once my husband's done it like like making the, driven the trip like probably five times it is not not fun so we're flying and Brady's never been on a plane so we're gonna figure that one out together <sighs> all right so love it bring lots of activities um I'm hoping she's going to sit on our lap. It's a really quick flight, which is crazy because it's actually, well, let's see. There's an hour time change. 
it's maybe like a two, two, two and a half hour flight, but which is way better than the car ride. But uh, she's just very questionable. I never know what I'm going to get. Toys and snacks and I don't know. <laughs> Anything that's mine, she seems to enjoy, like my straw cup, my food my wristlet with all my credit cards in it like anything that's not really for her she'll she'll play with so we might just have to let her walk up and down the aisle <laughs> oh my gosh but yes so I'm just shifting she um oh I can't see it I saw a whole part of your message touching me but no, I can't get that. I can't wait to oh hear gosh. about her little screeching on the plane. <laughs> she has the most high pitched girl yell. And lately when she sees children and she hears them like giggling and laughing, she just is sitting there. She goes, oh, ah! <laughs> like, you want to be a part of the kids? But it's like the most high pitched, like squealy, whatever. It'll be people will be like, oh, that's so cute. I'm going to be like, <laughs> thanks you probably are not enjoying this but it'll be fine so I'm gonna be shifting we'll be there till Tuesday so I'll just shift and wake up in the morning and do the best I can so I think all this mindset stuff and everything we learn in this business is huge for taking on life and things that come at you as well or I'd be stressing out so bad right now but I'm just like okay here we go. We're going to make it work. We always do. And it's always fine. So I hope you guys can find that mental clarity in your businesses as well. And just know like being real and vulnerable and just sharing the craziness of life is normal. Like we're not meant to be perfect. And I think that's what I've really accepted in this business. And that's what I see growth just from me being like, whatever, this is what's going on. And people will connect to it. So with that, does anyone have anything to close with? Awesome. Well, I hope you guys have a good evening and I will get this call up tomorrow um, morning for people that didn't listen. But thank you, Tiffany, for sharing. That was awesome. And we'll talk again soon. See ya.